did the federal court prejudge the Najib case? The answer to that question is a firm no. There was nothing sinister in the draft judgment being ready. I will explain why. This question arose as to whether the federal court had predetermined Najib's appeal even before counsel had completed their submission because Raja Petra Kamaruddin had a few hours before the federal court had delivered its formal decision somehow published in his website a draft unsigned copy of an alleged broad grounds. Now this practice of preparing a draft judgment even before delivering the decision is not something new for courts. The answer to court going lawyers is obvious. It's a common practice all over the world. For example, the UK courts do this regularly and this is well documented. We start with case management. Long before the actual hearings, the appellant would have filed his record of appeal. It will contain all documents or evidence that arose in the course of the trial. In a criminal appeal, the appellant also files a petition of appeal. The petition explains his legal points and the arguments he is going to take. The registrar of the court will then call for what is known as a case management or CM. It is a preliminary meeting of the court and counsel. Counsel on both sides will always attend it. Sometimes the presiding judge himself or herself might also be present. For less important cases, the registrar might attend with her assistance. Free dates of court, counsel and parties are discussed, exchanged and agreed upon. The court then appoints a hearing date. The administrative directions are then given. How papers, case references and counsel's arguments are to be filed and replied. Counsel's Written arguments are then filed, usually between two weeks to a month before the hearing. Without this first step, an appeal will never be set down for hearing. Then comes the reading stage. The assigned judges to the appeal will then plough through the entire record. They will scrutinise the judgments appealed from. In this way, they will understand the context of the appeal. They will also read counsel's written arguments and, if possible, they will study important parts of the evidence. Then come pre-hearing conferences. Before an appeal hearing involving usually multiple judges, the judges always meet. It is usually in the morning of the hearing, but for important cases, they may meet days earlier. So what happens at the pre-hearing conferences? At these pre-hearing conferences, judges ask themselves several crucial questions. For example, what is it about this appeal that's important? Is there material here which shows that the appeal must be allowed or are the arguments of counsel merely repetitions of the old arguments before the other court? Do we need to intervene for some other reasons and so forth? Sometimes during these meetings, one or two panel members may have some doubts or questions about crucial issues of evidence or some tough point of law. Then come the draft. This is called the initial non-binding view. From this discussion of the judges emerges usually a glimmer of the panel's overall sense of the decision to be made. This view is never final. It is always preliminary and it is non-binding. These broad grounds are then recorded in some fashion, but it is not signed. It's called a draft broad grounds. Then come the judicial embargo. There is an important point to this draft broad grounds. It is forbidden to publish these documents to anyone other than the judges. In the UK, a draft is sometimes published in confidence to counsel so that they may correct obvious errors, names of parties, places, dates, times and so forth. The courts then issue an embargo order of the draft from publication. Any premature publication or a leak is a criminal offence and a contempt of court. Now, how RPK procured an embargoed draft judgment from within the forbidden corridors of the federal court is a great mystery and we shall deal with that later. Judges can and often do depart from these preliminary draft views. Sometimes counsel can persuade the court out of its initial view. 
or sometimes judges might say at first blush they thought the argument was attractive but on reflection and research they change their minds sometimes they will change their minds because the legal arguments do not convince them or because the evidence is weak then comes the signing of the broad grounds after the appeal concludes the judges will retire to consider their decision they will relook at and finalize the draft broad grounds they will all sign it now at that point it becomes a formal broad grounds ready for publications the judges will emerge and they will deliver their decisions these broad grounds that they had signed are usually read out by the chairman of the panel because the courts use it to explain why they reached their decisions in the way they did then come the delivery of detailed grounds but this is very much later after the decision the courts will come up with detailed grounds depending on the complexity of the case the court may take from weeks to months to analyze vast amount of material and the law now let's look at the federal court's media statement on the 23rd of august 2022 This is why the federal court made a statement that the leaked broad grounds was nothing more than a draft meaning an unofficial version of its preliminary review. Now, let's look at a leak in 2022 of a very famous US case. Shortly after I wrote this piece, Ms. Tan Seok Chi, a participant in one of our groups, sent a message. This is what she said. In the United States, the draft judgment of the majority decision of the supreme court case of dobbs versus jackson women's health organization was leaked unwittingly one month before the actual verdict the decision itself was historic it had overturned the long held landmark decision in roe versus wade and that case had granted us women the right to an abortion now while there were questions about who and how the draft was leaked no one questioned the integrity of the judges who had subscribed to the draft's judgment so in our case in najib's case who betrayed the federal court what is sinister is how did the draft grounds leak out and how did rpk get his hands on it before everyone else when he was 10539 kilometers away no doubt the police will discover in short order the culprits behind it until i see you again thank you very much and goodbye